Hello, music listeners, underground enthusiasts, and people who pour water from plastic bottles into reusable water bottles. I kind of missed last week's Weekly Tracks review. Uh, I got busy. That was a thing. I don't know. That, that It happened. So, to make up for it, I've kind of, I got a little bit of a different format this week. Uh, we're gonna in, we're gonna include a few songs from from the previous week, the week before last that I that I might have missed, and uh, and also we're gonna do a special little fun thing at the end. We're gonna do we're gonna do a little thing that I came up with all by myself. So let's let's just start. Let's just do it. You know why wait? Why wait? So the first track we're gonna talk about this week is Power Doll with Neurosis Architect featuring Black Winter Wells. We've talked about the feeling I'm about to describe before on the channel, but as someone whose production skills do not extend beyond the basics, it's always a really fun sound for me to listen to and I don't get bored of it. And that sound would be using digital instruments and synthesized sounds to create melodies and vibes that sound organic and natural it's hard to explain beyond that but it's such a contradicting feeling and i think it's great the melodies in this track are serene and peaceful soft and bouncy at some points and then occasionally spacey and distant as well the vocal chop and the wildly fun percussion are the main driving force for me of the first half of the track and it really establishes a sonic environment that takes place all around you while you're listening and wells's verse in the middle of the track is sweet and contributes to the gentle tone of the song. The notes are fluid and pretty, and the unique vocal mix feels right at home with the rest of the production. Overall, incredibly pretty with some unique and rather lovely production. And then we have a new track from XXX Tentacion, I'm Not Human, featuring Lil Uzi Vert. So this is a bit of an interesting release, at least for me. The song itself has been around for a while, but I suppose an official release was never actually a thing until now. And in this release, they get rid of X singing the intro from Snuff by Slipknot, which I did like a lot, but I do understand how they might have not gotten approval to use it on the track. And there is a conversation to be had around the sort of hazy morality surrounding the somewhat questionable extensive posthumous catalog that has been developed for X over the years since his passing, but that is a different conversation for a different time. Right now, let's just focus on the song itself because I do, I do think that it is an interesting song. Unfortunately, the audio quality of X's vocals are muddy and a bit noisy, which is probably due to it being recorded on a phone or the isolated tracks just being lost. However, I just so happen to love music that has little to no regard for technical quality in the presence of emotional depth and personality, so it really works out for me. I would love to hear more of X on this track. I really do love his vocals. The dejected weariness, even with poor audio quality, bleeds through with every note and the emotion is translated well. It it is a good performance. Uzi does take the bulk of the vocal performance on this track though, and it's good. He really seems to be trying to match the somber acoustic tone that X has laid out, and in the mixing a bit of his other influences come out of it, but he stays true to the message and sort of mission statement of the track. Out of the posthumous releases that have come out, and there has been a lot, I like this one a lot. And then up next, we have Sewer Person with 2-5 Ski. This is the first Sewer single since the You Feel Me project, and it feels like a bit of an aftermath or emotional release from that. The beat from Nico North is fairly reserved, and with the dark keys floating around the beat under some pretty non-demanding percussion, it ends up being a pretty chill track. And Sewer Person sort of rants a bit over this beat, not in an angry way or anything, but I feel that it feels very... Kind of like Kanye over a tight beat kind of way. God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Sewer Person sort of rants a bit over this beat, not in an angry way or anything, but it feels very stream of consciousness, just letting out thoughts on a lot of different areas of life on the track. It's got some clever and even sometimes a bit funny bars with a super relaxed and effortless flow. It's got an engaging yet casual tone that is very easy to listen to. But at its core, the repeated Not Alone bar feels like a reassurance, and given this is a birthday release, this does make more sense. Sure, there is some intelligently written similes and some pretty hard bars on this track, but really the song goes beyond that and feels almost like an update on life, with Sewer Person addressing the current state of affairs in a way, addressing love for his city, but the problems that come with that, emotional buildup, and the stability and validity of relationships. This song gives a lot, and I appreciate that. Friday night. Friday night fun. I love Friday night fun, bro. They were talking about but Friday night. I like you feel me a lot, but I love Friday night fun. And then up next, we have Epitome of Failure and Teddy Boy with These Lonely Nights. 
I feel like we haven't really been talking about a lot of emo recently, so let's do it right now. Epitome of Failure starts off the track with a wispy and noisy verse, with airy and bright layers overlapping each other, fighting for second in command behind the main vocal lead. The breathy and bright mix works really well for the vocal delivery, and the layers play off of each other really well and create a busy but also contained sound that reflects the overwhelming feelings that are being described on the track. And Teddy Boy makes a contrasting approach with a more upfront and direct vocal delivery and mix, and I think it works really well with Epitome of Failure's trancy and wide sound. Teddy's notes are solid and clean, and the flows work really well with the moody and spacey atmosphere of the beat. I really like this verse a lot. Both artists here do a great job to make an emotionally compelling and overall really solid emo track. After hyping up Eterna Forest so much and talking about how that style of music was few and far between for Mercy Kill, it seems that my prayers have been answered because he's right back at it. And this song is moody and heavy at every single level. The piano is saturated and shaky, resonating deeply in the mix, and Mercy's vocals are so roomy and spacey that the fast-paced flows shoot through the song like harsh winds breaking through the air, and the dusty drums pound into the mix as well, shaking the environment everything lives in. The song is dark and muddy in the best way possible, and Mercy has done a great job at using his production to reflect the emotions of the lyrics. It is a heavy track. Mercy releases every everything with such impact and intensity and it works so well. I love this track just as much as Eterna Forest, if not more. Then we got Thayer period with Clay Golem. Thayer's production on this track has this eerie ambient dreaminess that does a great job of creating a really interesting sound. The wavy keys, the soft piano, the white noise, and all of the rising chords swirl together to create a hazy mist of melodies, and Thayer's droning and layered vocals only contribute to this feeling, as Thayer uses the analogy of a clay golem to represent feeling unwanted in one's own body. Some of the lyrics lean a bit more heavily into the allegory, like with misshapen golem made of clay, his limbs are stringy, sits in solace ever silent, cranium dented ever slightly, and then some of them are more direct, like with the line, I've got a bone to pick with the man in heaven who cursed me with this body, the heavy moodiness in which the vocals are delivered makes this song feel desperate and weary. It's a tragic but beautiful track. Once again, Thayer proves why they are in their own lane when it comes to developing a unique sound. And we have Hirosha with Nostalgia Decay. Uh, it's always interesting to hear what Hirosha does with production that is not his, but in situations like these where his music is not self-produced, Young Spoiler and Michael Warren are fantastic options. I love both of these artists' production. And on their production, Hirosha describes love and loss and a desire to return to feelings of the past while also acknowledging resentment for the person that he still loves. And I love his vocals on this. There's grit where there needs to be, there's smooth consistency in other places, and at the end he delivers some impressive screams that I'm not at all surprised hearing from him. I just think he really shines on like the glossy Midwest alt-rock production. Despite his experience being in a more traditional take on the genre, he does a great job with the modern glassy internet-born take on Midwest emo that seems to be leaning closer and closer to hyperpop. It is a wonderful vocal performance with a fantastic sound overall. And then we have Clof Hitch with Baby Tees and Punching Machines. Clove Hitch breaks our hearts with a song that doesn't provide a lyrically dense experience, but does provide a lyrically compelling experience, because in just a few lines, the emotions, purpose, and concept of the track is fully delivered on. There doesn't need to be a lot to say, because what is being said does such a good job at getting the point across. Clove Hitch's breathy and soft delivery over a stripped back and simple acoustic guitar track feels tragic and intimate. It is a song that refuses to let you ignore or escape from its insistent melancholy. It's incredibly pretty and the atmosphere pulls out emotion from me whether I wanted it to or not. Black Winter Wells has got a new track out with Void Angel, uh, which has got qu quite the packed house uh, full of features on this track, and at four minutes long, the song gives more than enough time for each artist on this track to shine and give an impactful and meaningful performance. The noisy and brash production from Winter is all-encompassing, containing wide synth chords, dark and spacey melodies, and blaring bass notes, and everyone takes a different approach to this rather versatile beat. The song seems busy and noisy, but it's really well put together. I really enjoy how roomy and big everything sounds. It's the perfect middle ground between static, chaos, and technical melody. There's one of these every week. I, I do it to myself. Uh, there's always a name, an artist's name, that I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce. Uh, there's a three in there, which I'm going to guess is an E. So we'll go with Yake. Yake? Yake? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong.
uh, because I, I am most of the time. But we have cease and desist from this artist. <laughs> this song is loud and it rattles the eardrums, clips constantly, and overall feels like a sonic earthquake, and it's pretty great for that. The flows and vocal energy are fantastic. Yake really has the confidence and intensity to match the abrasive production. And the changes in vocal mix to an overblown and dark distortion that almost renders the lyrics incomprehensible are a lot of fun and adds sonic diversity in a genre that doesn't normally see songs reaching the three minute mark. It's metallic and industrial sounding and in those sounds unleashes as much energy as possible. Corefish has got a new track out with Dylan Longworth titled Sympathy. The mix on this is, is damn near perfect. You can argue with me on that, but my opinion will not be changing. Both Corfish and Dylan's notes fit seamlessly on this track, with pristine and clean notes and a polished sheen coated over the entire song. It's catchy, it's hard-hitting, it's insanely fun, and since it is Corfish, it contains so many one-off mixing quirks, production choices, and effects that almost feel like easter eggs on the track for you to find on each listen. Because on each listen, you hear something new that proves how painstakingly well-crafted this track is with a highly respectable level of technical precision. Decision. Corefish has become a rapid favorite of mine, and Dylan also does a fantastic job of bringing the song to the level that it is at. And we have RQD with Pinnacle Mountain Trail. Uh, RQD's energy immediately bursts in with the fuzz rock instrumental, creating a fun and somewhat nostalgic punk track that contains a raw energy that I think is pretty hard to authentically achieve. Songs like this are kind of bulletproof in that every flaw you could point out works to the advantage of the aesthetic. RQD's vocals are abrasive and half-shouted, with melodic intention and high-energy execution, and beneath the fuzz, the instrumentation is actually really, really well done. It's catchy and memorable, and the writing on it is compelling as well. The song is a high-energy, distorted experience that fits right in with your favorite hits of the 2000s wave of punk and fuzz rock. And that's the end of, like, my list, but uh, I did say that we were going to do something different this week, given that I missed last week, so we're going to get rid of the honorable mentions, kind of, halfway, bear with me. We're going to get rid of that little text box that I play at the end, and we're going to do a bit of a lightning round. We're going to do a lightning round where I, I talk about a, a bunch of songs very quickly, like one sentence each, uh, songs that I think are, are good, and we're just going to fly through them. So uh, let's do it. First track of the lightning round is Senshi, Sensi. I've been listening for a little bit now and still don't know how to pronounce it with The End of Us featuring Hyrith, Aaron, Haylog, and Zona. This song has an insanely talented lineup that delivers an impressive and emotional powerhouse of an alternative emo track. And then we have Ghost Hands with Find a Reason featuring Fallen, an emotional yet fairly poppy track with a catchy bounce and impressive vocal performances. Garden's got a new track out with Welcome Home. This is Garden doing what he does best with beautifully descriptive imagery and emotional depth that many struggle to achieve over a ghostly acoustic guitar track. blosper has got a new track out with Whiskey Jar, a well-delivered acoustic track with a polished and shiny flair to it that brings in some interesting mixing choices you wouldn't normally hear on this track. Shizu Case has got Armory Out, which is a really catchy emo track with tight flows that addresses some interesting scene-related topics. Twain's got a new track out with Keanu, which features some intelligent bars delivered with high, confident energy that remains increasingly entertaining. Senses has dropped On and On, which is a sparkly and bright track with a wonderful vocal mix that feels futuristic but also comfortably familiar. And Lavera has dropped Cruise Control, which is a super clean and smooth R&B track with great writing and ethereal vocals that float effortlessly across the track. And that's the end of the lightning round, and that's also the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, maybe I won't miss next week's video, or maybe I will. Uh, that's up to me. Uh, that's up to future me, because I want to I wanna do it now, but uh, things might change. Catch me in the next video where we reveal and find out whether or not you are the father. Bye.